So uh, IT financial management actually touches about 50% of the reference architecture. And that goes back to what I presented in the beginning around that there is a lot of data flows that is happening and there's a lot of functional component that has got some minor trimmings in terms of what are the attributes that are maintained on these uh, uh, data objects in order to truly support uh, financial management. Let's look at it in a little bit more detail. Well, the first thing is that, and I mentioned that in the beginning, but it's very important to stress, the fact that we now have a service backbone that goes all the way from conceptual to actual allows, and we have connectivity to it, allows us to do much, much better cost tracking. Today, in most IT organizations, the requirement to deploy is kind of a fuzzy area that doesn't really connect you between what was originally kicked off and what is actually running. And so what you do is that one, you, you serviceize everything, you make sure you describe everything as service. You build the service budget and, and, uh, and then uh, plan out, build out something you put into production. And then you track what you have in production. And all of that cost that you track, you aggregate backwards to the chain so you can track it all at, up at the conceptual level. And you can do that fully automatically if you have the data uh, models in place. Whereas today in many organizations, it's a very complicated uh, job at the side, uh, run through uh, vendor invoicing and cross-charging and what have I. You can do much smarter here and much more fine-grained. It's a little bit like when you first learn to program and, and uh, you are learning about recursive functions. And first time you write a small program that works with recursive function, you look at it and say, it can't be true. That was just too easy. It just works by magic almost. It's a little bit with this one. Once you've got it in place, you can actually do magic in terms of tracking. So, moving on, if my computer will it, let's just look at, at, at not the entire hierarchy. We don't have time to go through all the details here, uh, but we'll just look at the employee expense management service, hands and, and the way he gets uh, a new instance developed. And we will start at the, um, uh, in how you subscribe to a system, uh, just recalling what it is here. So we will we will look at that, and then we we'll go back to how you you uh, you capture it in the in the planning phase. So uh, essentially, you we've gone through it. We uh, Hans has uh, deployed his system; it's up and running. There is a chargeback contract that has been created. Uh, the owner is Hans. Uh, it's associated with the uh, so. The, uh, the price structure that is associated with that uh, uh, system might be something like um, that the hosting is being paid for by the, uh, by the cost of the hosting. Uh, the FTEs that is being used to support this is charged 2.5K per uh, FTE per month, and the backup is charged with what the backup is actually costing. And I should note again that here in the financial management work that has been done in, in uh, 2.1, we are primarily cost-based, but the system would actually also work in other models where we have cost plus or a price based on, on the value of the service and not the cost of the service. Okay, so uh, at the collection time, at the end of the charging period, uh, we need to create a chargeback record. And what is happening is that the users record will be produced. And there will be a users record here for the hosting component that basically says uh, for period May, uh, you, uh, you will cost, you have cost me $2K. And that's the hosting service that has produced its own chargeback record that is now being fed into my employee expense management system as a users record. And similarly, uh, there's usage for uh, the uh, the people that has been running support, and they have spent 243 hours uh, in the support systems. It could also maybe be a number of tickets or something else, right? And uh, and the uh, and the price uh, for that is 3.6k dollars. That's what has been collected from the support guys. Uh, we might not charge because I said, well, we just do a flat charge upwards, but that's actually the cost that has been collected. And finally, the backup says you backed up two gigabytes of data, uh, it cost you $1K. The chargeback record will then be 
compiled from that. Uh, and uh, from a period, if they're hosting 2K uh, FTE, there are two FTEs, it'll cost you 5K because that's what we have, uh, the contract says, it's 2.5K per person, even though the actual costs were lower, right? And the backup, two gigabytes, uh, it's gonna cost you 1K dollars because we're just giving you on the charge, total 8K dollars. And the reason why we know what to collect is because we have a service model that tells you the hosting service, no, sorry, the employee expense management service is delivered by some software that runs on hosting and runs on uh, uh, use some backup and, and use some uh, FTEs. So the model tells us what to collect and what to compile the, uh, the charge back from. If we then move backwards into saying the investment portfolio, how does it work from an investment perspective? And, and that's kind of the, 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 the uh, where it all gets together. Well, it all started, if you remember in the beginning, was that there was some demand coming in that uh, was portfolio backlog items that essentially said, I want something more to be developed. And we have defined now, listed in red here, some extra attributes that IT for IT compliant modules must capture. Like what is the investment budget associated with a portfolio demand? So somebody has estimated that it will cost you 36K to deliver the next version of employee expense management. And by the way, they also estimated when it would be complete potentially. And then you build up a proposal uh, that is a scope agreement. And based on that, you go down uh, and associate um, an IT budget item in the financial uh, side of the house where you would sign up the budget and say, yeah, you can get 36K for that. And by the way, we also want to have some budget allocated for running this service, uh, 28K. And that has now been tracked in all of these various components as something that is being budgeted and approved finally, and that's associated with the, with the proposal. Is it approved? First it's budgeted and then it gets approved. And maybe it's back to, uh, status active that implies that we're actually in developing it right now. We can also, at the service portfolio level, then track what is the total uh, cost of ownership budget that is budgeted for it, which is the 36 plus 28K dollars, that's 64K dollars. Uh, but, uh, but what is the actual? Here it says the same figure, uh, but that's actually only after the fact. You need to track it as you move along. And how can you do that? Well, that's back to what we just looked into. It happens in R2F, right? With the uses and the uh, and the chargeback component, because as you track that information, you can essentially from the chargeback uh, and uses record, you can compute every month what is actually being spent. And by the way, it's not only what is spent uh, in production, but also what developers are spending when you develop the product, because you allocate resources in order to develop. That's FT. You just allocate it from the catalog. It's just a resource like any other resource. You allocate the servers that you test on. You allocate the test licenses you need, etc. So you can you can get all of that information back, and then you can feed it upwards to the project into the service design to the service portfolio, and you can track what is the actual spent. The details need to be worked out in in a much bigger spreadsheet. We don't have time for that today. <laughs> 